I did a list of the worst songs of 1976, and one commenter wrote me a long post complaining about the fact that I put Afternoon Delight at number one, a song he liked, and not play that funky music by Wild Cherry. I don't think I ever responded to that guy, but here's my response now. You suck! How the hell can you not like this song? I didn't realize there even were people who didn't like play that funky music. This song is awesome. What, do you want people to not play funky music? What kind of jerk would want that? I didn't say that at the time, but now I can, because now I have One Hit Wonderland, my show where we talk about the full careers of artists who are known for only one song. And now that I have this show, I can devote a whole episode to how great play that funky music is. But more importantly, I can find out what happened to Wild Cherry, the band that performed it, because I've always thought that these guys should have been bigger. They had a unique sound, a rock band playing funk music. They were a complete anomaly at the time. They were like the Red Hot Chili Peppers a decade before they ever existed, right? And yet, they never really went anywhere after their first song. How could they have not capitalized on their brief glimpse of fame? Well, let's find out. Wild Cherry was formed in the early 70s in beautiful Steubenville, Ohio. They took their name from a box of cough drops and just never got around to changing it. The Wild Cherry story basically belongs to their lead singer and songwriter, a man with horribly ugly 70s hair named Rob Parisi. And fortunately for us, he put his own backstory in his biggest hit. So if you don't already know it, here it goes. Once he was a boogie singer, yeah, playing in a rock and roll band. He never had no problems, yeah. Burning down the one night stands. Then everything around him, yeah. Got to start to feeling so low. So he decided quickly, yes, he did, to break up the band and go back to his day job. Yeah, they had a record deal, but then they got dropped and Rob went back to managing a Bonanza Steakhouse. But later Parisi got the music bug again and reformed the band with a new lineup. Now basically they were just a cover band for a while, playing a lot of Led Zeppelin and Rolling Stones, playing in nearby Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Now Cleveland is of course a rock and roll town. Hello Cleveland! Hello Cleveland! But Pittsburgh was all about soul and funk. I assume because of the Philly soul scene happening on the other side of the state. Now this was 76 and disco was at this point just starting to really take over. To us people who weren't there, the whole Disco Sucks movement and Disco Demolition Night seemed like a ridiculous overreaction to a harmless musical fad, which it was. But understand that back in the day, disco was ubiquitous for years. Rock stations were adding disco to their rotations. Travesties like this were happening. It was a rough time for rock bands. And right around the same time, Wild Cherry were discovering that they needed to steal a few tricks from the brothers if they were going to keep getting gigs. So they began learning some funk music after getting no response from a predominantly black crowd more than once. And just when it hit them, somebody turned around and shouted, Play that funky music, my boy. Yeah, Play That Funky Music is basically the entirely true story of how they got big, before they got big. Someone actually shouted, Play That Funky Music at them, and Parisi wrote the phrase down on a napkin and worked it into a song in about five minutes while they worked on other stuff. They thought their big hit was going to be a cover of I Feel Sanctified by the Commodores, which for the record they do a decent version of. But after road testing play that funky music for a while, they polished it enough to where the producers thought that would be a bigger hit. And it was. Oh yes it was. God I love that bass line. Boy did they pick the right bandwagon to jump on. Their first hit song both was, and was about, a story about how great it feels to sell out. Wild Chariot had no success as a rock band, but as a disco act, all the way to number one, baby. They had discovered the same thing Elvis' manager Sam Phillips did in 1954. Get a white act to make black music and you can make a fortune. And the winner are, play that funky music Wild Cherry. I've listened to my share of classic 70s tunes and I would say that no act ever really lived up to what Wild Cherry did that year. Making a good dance song with a rock edge. They're a little bit disco and a little bit rock and roll. Listen to that kick-ass guitar solo. 
course, let's not overstate this. There were, in fact, people mixing up funk and rock prior to Wild Cherry. And they also weren't the first white boys to be a credible 70s R&B act. The average white band beats them that by about four or five years, and they don't sound nearly as dated as Wild Cherry does now. And we'd have to be pretty stupid to forget that the Bee Gees existed too. Even so, I still feel that there's something special about Play That Funky Music anyway. The Brothers Gibb made pretty much straight disco music. They didn't have the gnarly bar band background of Wild Cherry. Even if the song wasn't about being a funk convert, you can tell these guys are boogie rock in their core. Nowadays, every average bar band does a crappy cover of Brick House or something, so it doesn't sound so fresh nowadays, but I think it may have been different in 76. If Grant Funk had actually played funk, they probably would have sounded a lot like this. I mean, you compare this to a few years later when a few other established rock acts tried to get it on the dance music bandwagon. You might disagree, but in my humble opinion, those songs were all terrible. They're not good disco, they're not good rock. Their grooves are all lumpy, and they clearly didn't get this kind of music. Not the same way they play that funky music did. Play that funky music is about discovering that you're not too good for music you didn't think you understood. As someone who underwent his own pop conversion a few years ago, I think it resonates pretty well. And it's just so damn happy. They are just selling it. I mean, this song had a bad reputation for a little while after disco became the symbol of everything wrong with music. And by 1980, a whole song about a rock guy becoming a disco convert, that got about the same treatment as a guy who had once suggested before the war that Hitler had a few good ideas. But once people stopped being too cool for disco, it popped right back up again. As well it should have. This is a song about expanding your horizons. And on top of that, it's a statement of racial harmony. Black people and white people getting down to that funky sound. I find it more inspiring than Ebony and Ivory at the very least. Then again, I find being tasered in the nostrils more inspiring than Ebony and Ivory too. No, you gotta keep on playing funky music. But what happens when you're done doing that? Naturally, after Play That Funky Music became a huge hit, the studio executives wanted them to keep pumping out the same thing over and over again. Now, Rob didn't think rehashing one song could make a career, but he was under a lot of pressure from the studio. Parisi had two options here. On one hand, he can try and fight the system, pick up a reputation as being difficult, make the music he wanted to make, and just pray that it found an audience against the conventional wisdom. On the other hand, he could give in and follow the wishes of a bunch of tasteless, stuffed shirt executives who probably wouldn't recognize good music if it punched them in the mouth. It's not an easy decision. Which one did they decide to go with? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. They say play that funky music right in the first line of the song. Yeah, in case it's not clear, they went with option number two. To Parisi's eternal regret, he caved in and gave the studio execs exactly what they wanted. And for his obedience, he was rewarded with jack shit in the way of success. He himself called his follow-ups to his big hit, the What's Happening Now of music. Which, for the record, might be the most 70s way you could have put that. Even the name of the album, Electrified Funk, was also a line in Play That Funky Music. Like Play That Funky Music, Baby Don't You Know was also a true story about their lives as a white funk band. Hell, it's a complete clone of the original. Not that the only people they ripped off were themselves. Since they were from Ohio, one of their main influences were funk legends, the Ohio Players. See if this sounds familiar. Yeah, Wild Cherry were not exactly breaking new ground here. Hell, now that I think about it, they even kind of ripped off the Ohio Players album covers. Beyond that, I'm confused about what's happening in the song. It's about how they'd show up to play for black audiences and they'd be surprised that the band was, in fact, white. Apparently that's true, but I don't even understand how that could happen. They call themselves white boy in the song. Eh. Don't call yourselves honkies. This is just awkward. Not really. I mean, hell, it's like they said in their first song, play that funky music till you die. And that's basically what they did. Most of their songs sounded like play that funky music. Also, their album covers definitely got a little desperate seeming at one point. 
They did also try to go the soft rock route at least once or twice, but Rob Parisi's voice was meant for hard rock and funk. And he wasn't even really amazing at that. He definitely wasn't fit for smooth AM light rock. Don't want no cloudy morning. Won't you hear what I say? There won't be no tomorrow if you're not with me today. To be honest, I think Play That Funky Music is the only song where I can stand Parisi's attempt to sound funky. Most of the time he's just overdoing it. After three flop albums that I can't really find because most of their stuff went out of print decades ago, Wild Cherry called it quits in 79 and went their separate ways. Their guitar player Brian Bassett joined Foghat in the early 90s. Parisi kicked around various music jobs for a while. He was a DJ, he was an A&R guy, he was a songwriter behind the scenes. By his own admission, he didn't save his money very wisely at first. But then in 1990, he discovered Vanilla Ice had sampled his song without permission. So of course he sued the Silver LeMay pants off of him. He got a huge settlement. He seems to be doing alright for himself lately. He makes smooth jazz albums now. If you go to his website, you can hear a Kenny Gified version of Play That Funky Music. Play that jazzy music, white boy. No. Look, I love Play That Funky Music, but let's be honest here. If you're listening to Wild Cherry, there are a bunch of better funk bands you could be listening to, too. Most of the rest of their stuff is listenable at the very least, and I can imagine any number of these songs randomly showing up on a Tarantino soundtrack someday, but for the most part, I have to say I was wrong. They were not that unique. Except for Play That Funky Music, you can find guys doing the same thing at any venue in America. Wild Cherry were basically a decent bar band that somehow lucked into one big hit and never really made anything noteworthy again. Still, I hold by my opinion that anyone who doesn't like play that funky music is no friend of mine. This is a song that brings people together. This is a song made in the absolute height of funk music about knowing the joy of funk music knows no boundaries. You got to keep on playing funky music. Lay down the boogie, play that funky music till you die. I'm out. <laughs>